Hello, and welcome to Chicken Bros. My name is David Heath. And I am New Hunter. <laughs> and this is it. It's the end game. Uh, obviously, this movie's still a little fresh, so if you haven't seen it, you really shouldn't be here. Spoilers! Spoiler alert. Oh my gosh. This oh is the, boy. the what? The 22nd film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I and, think so. And it's like... It's clearly not the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it serves as a kind of finale to the arc we've seen grow over the past 11 years. The way I see it, this is the original Avengers. They're going to go on to, like, the ultimate, so, like, the new Avengers. Something yes. else. This is the original Avengers closing the book. Yep. And they do it in such a beautiful, fantastic way. This movie is I know. everything I wanted and more. Oh, yes. <sighs> so... I suppose we do it just like we did with Infinity War, go from the beginning all the way to the end. Yep. So, this movie starts with Hawkeye under house arrest after the whole Sokovia Accords thing. Oh, and boy. as soon as that happened, I knew immediately, I'm like, oh no, 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 no. At least leave one of them behind, you know? Because I knew they were going to go from... And then I saw Dust, like, none of them. Only he was left behind. I'm like, oh no! Yeah, that was messed up. Oh, that was just wrong. I literally whispered, like, I was like, oh, that's fucked up. Yeah, I know, right? That's so messed up. And, like, when I, when I saw it in theaters, like, the crowd I was, I was among was, like, they must have all been Marvel fans because they cheered in places and, like, like, yeah, like, tensed up in places. Like, you could tell. And when that happened, everyone was like, oh. <laughs> like, oh, no. That's a, I mean, it's good for him to, like, you know, to, like, to motivate him to try to, you know, do what they do later, but it's such a heartbreaking scene. Yeah. And then we see uh, Tony Stark and Nebula on the stranded Milano in the middle of literally nowhere space. Yep. Stark, I don't know if you noticed this the first time you saw it. I mean, because I didn't notice it the first time I saw it. I've seen it twice. Oh, boy. And I'm, yeah, I will see it again. Um, mm hmm. They CGI and RDJ's body to make him like an almost anorexic because he hasn't been eating anything. Oh wow, I did not, I did not notice that. Wow. Yeah, they made him like way skinny. And he's sending that message to Pepper on his little helmet head. It's basically everything you heard in the trailer. Pretty much. And then there's like a glimmer of light, and I thought for a second Adam Warlock, because you know this is based on the Infinity Gauntlet story, and I thought I was like, oh no, right, yeah, Captain Marvel. <laughs> And so she brings them back to Earth to the Avengers compound where they're trying to figure out what to do next. And so, yep. so you know, they just say, well, why don't we just go after him? I mean, we're able to figure out where he went based on how, uh, the energy of the stones that sent him through the portal. We can just go there and just get him. He's not expecting us. <laughs> and they go there and they realize that he was because he used the stones again to destroy the stones. And so, like, they're gone. They're, like, been reduced to nothing but atoms. Yeah, and when they, when he tells them this, and they go, and they, you know, they, you know, they find him, he's, like, all, like, old. Basically, it's, like, the end of the Infinity Gauntlet comic, where he's just in regular clothes, and he's just, like, chilling out. Yeah. Except that he's got, like, he's got, like, half of his face burned off. Well, not yeah. burned off, but, like, burned. Or, like, charred. Charred. Yeah. Yeah, he's got, he's got, he's got that Two-Face motif yeah, going his, on. Yeah, his arm is all fucked up, and... I love the I love the fact that the first time you see Thanos, he's just trying to make soup. He's like picking yep. stuff from his garden, putting it in a bag, and like I'm gonna make some nice whatever fruit this is gumbo. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so like he destroyed the stones and then Thor cut off his head. Well first they cut off his arm. Which right, I'm they like... cut off his arm first, and that's how they figured out the stones were missing. And I'm like, and I was just like, okay, where was this in the last movie? Could right, it take everyone right. a lot of trouble? Right. <laughs> and then Thor cut off his head. Rocket said, "What did you do?" He's like, "I went for the head." <laughs> and I was like, "Yes." Yes. A little too late, though. A little too late, but and then, he did it. And then the movie does something I didn't see. I didn't see coming at all. It skips forward five years. Yeah. What the? I mean, I get I know why that's they crazy, did that. Right. I think the only reason they did that, well. We'll get to that a little later, but I think we only do that to set up a certain character. Okay. Personally. Um, and when and when it skips five years later, the first person we see trying to adjust is Captain America, who's 
basically become like a counselor for people who have lost people during the yeah, and like, and I don't know if I, I mean you probably didn't but uh, one of the guys in that room in that room with Captain America one of them is one of the directors of this movie and the and another one like this bald guy with a goatee uh, is Jim Starlin the guy who created Thanos huh which I thought was really nice really cool Interesting. Also, I'd just like to point out kudos to Marvel Studios for finally introducing a homosexual character in their universe. Yep. It was about damn time. Um, uh, but, like, you see everybody who's left behind during, after the, they're trying to adjust to this life and everything. And then you see something that, from left off from Ant-Man and the Wasp, you see this rat crawl across the control board in the van and Scott gets pulled right out of the quantum realm, and he's like seeing all this happening. He's like, "What happened?" Like he's noticed a lot of people is dying. He goes, and then he goes to this monument, and he's like, "No, no." And I was literally doing this, but I was like, "No, no, yeah, no. yeah, please, no, like, no, 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 not Cassie. Cassie, not Cassie." And then he, and then he sees his name. I was like, "What? What?" And like, and I can see why they did that. They assumed because he was in the quantum realm for five years, yep. they like he was one of the people who got snapped away. Yep. But then he goes to. Cassie's house and sees her. She's like grown, like well, not grown up. She's like maybe seventeen. Mm, and it's my little, it's, my little Cassie's grown up now. I love, I love what he said. He's like, "You're so big." <laughs> he was just so happy to know that she was okay. And for you fans who may not be as into the Ant Man mythos as I am, which I'm only into because I saw Ant Man. Like, <laughs> what was it like six years ago now? Uh, four. Four. So anyway, now that Cassie's a little older, she could probably assume her superhero identity as Stature, yes. who has all the same powers as Ant Man. You know, whatever. We'll yes. see. Please. And so, Black Widow has kind of had like a few. Who was it? It was Captain America, Rocket, Nebula, Okoye, and Rhodey. Uh, like, I guess out keeping sight of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know if you caught this, Noah. I think they made a Namor the Submariner tease in that scene. Yeah, I, saw, I heard that too. Yeah, because like, Okoye but... said, Nat, it's a it's an earthquake under the ocean. He's like, Namor? Namor? I mean, I hope not because I hate him, but Namor? Oh, no, I, oh I'm, not, I'm not a huge... I'm not like, <gasps> Namor! I'm just like, hmm, yeah. that's interesting. And, but they, if they have him, they have to have the Fantastic Four as well, because you well, know, that's he kind of goes... And it is possible, because they got their Fox properties back, so who knows? Mm -hmm. Ghost Rider! Ghost Rider! Um, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm waiting for. And so, you know, they're trying to adjust to all this that's happened over the past five years, and then they hear... Well, they don't hear it, they just, like, get a little video feed of somebody on the, at the front door, like, Hey, I need, I need to come in! Hey, it's Scott Lang! Remember me? We went, uh, Ant, -Man. Ant Man. I got real big in Germany. I may remember that. <laughs> uh, and and then, Steve's like, "Is this is this up from a few days ago?" Like, this is is the front door. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, he's pacing. Like Scott's pacing. Like, Scott. Scott. You yeah, all right, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> and then he tries to explain to them about the quantum realm. And like, I was stuck down there, and somebody who, unfortunately, isn't here anymore was supposed to pull me out and Natasha this is what was interesting Natasha said that must have been a rough five years like no it was more like five hours <laughs> like whoa wait a minute because <laughs> this is the thing I don't know about you I don't know if you had like any assumptions about this movie's plot but I didn't have anywhere to base this like any assumptions on because the trailers, yeah, I the trailers were so were vague do. the trailers just like we're gonna get Thanos but that was it. They didn't really explain anything else. So I didn't yeah. assume anything. But as soon as he said, oh, it was like five hours. I was like, so time works differently in the quantum realm? And then I immediately thought, they're going to time travel, aren't they? <laughs> and then, you know, Scott's saying, like, what if we can get in there and control, like, the path of the quantum realm and control all that chaos? So Steve's like, are you talking about a time machine? He's like, no, it's not a time machine. It's like, yeah, okay, I guess, yeah, it, I guess it is machine. like a time machine. <laughs> Uh, and so and like, I know it sounds crazy and Natasha's like I get my emails from a raccoon nothing's crazy anymore <laughs> <laughs> also can Scarlett Johansson just pick a hair color I know uh, right like, she like, goes from red hair movies, she red was a redhead red for most last... of the movies and now 
blonde, and, Infinity Infinity War, War, blonde and now, now it's she's both. Slowly going red. Now she's go slowly getting red again. Yeah, but they're like, still girl. Like a they're still blonde in there.